Moving to another topic, that of distal femur fractures. It's important to know that um, initially these were mainly young patients, secondary to significant trauma, but certainly seeing more geriatric distal femur fractures now. Periprosthetic fractures are also becoming much more common. Young patients have fractures that have significant displacement secondary to significantly high energy. Remember that the distal femur is trapezoidal in nature, and this is important when placing hardware. The anatomic axis of the distal femur is six to seven degrees of valgus. The gastrocnemius extends the distal fragment posteriorly, which can, can make reduction difficult. The classification system, the R A's are the extraarticular fractures, B's are the partial articular fractures, so extending some, somewhat into the articular surface, and type C's being the complete articular surface where the fragment is can be as disassociated um, from the shaft. On physical examination, there, you have to realize there is, there is risk to the popliteal artery if there is significant displacement, as these can be extremely high energy injuries. If there is no pulse after gross alignment has, has been restored, then angiography is indicated, as noted here, where there is a significant injury to the popliteal vessel. X-rays are often improved if you can get traction views, but these can be quite painful for the patient. In an elderly patient, you want to also make sure that you evaluate for pre-existing degenerative arthritis of the knee, as if this is severe, it may change your treatment options from open induction internal fixation to replacement. It is important to get a CT to make sure that you, you can establish whether or not there's intraarticular involvement, but especially to look for the coronal plane fracture known as the Hoffa fracture. 38% of these type C fractures will indeed have a Hoffa fracture, which, which may be missed without a CT. Again, angiography is indicated when there are di diminished distal pulses after alignment has been restored. You may also consider this after knee dislocation. Treatment, non-operative treatment, if not, if not significantly displaced in a non-ambulatory patient, they can be managed with a brace with immediate range of motion but non-weight bearing for at least six weeks. Operative fixation may include an external fixator to temporize the injury until the soft tissues can uh, heal and then the patient can be treated with operative fixation, uh, open reduction internal fixation. Again, it, the goal is anatomic reduction of the joint and fixation of the articular component to the shaft so that early motion can occur. It is important during the approach to preserve vascularity. Early range of motion of the knee is important as stiffness following these injuries can be significant. It's important to start quadriceps and hamstring strengthening as soon as a patient is able to do so with a stable construct. Retrograde intermedullary nails can be used. They are a good treatment for supracolar fractures without significant comminution and may be a preferred treatment in a patient with osteoporotic bone. Traditionally, it has been said that you should have four centimeters of intact distal femur so that you can capture the distal fragment with your interlocking screws. Some of the newer generation nails have multiple screws and multiple planes, so you may be able to get fixation with less than four centimeters of bone now. At times, the distal femoral replacement may be the option of choice and this would be for an unreconstructable fracture or a patient who has a periprosthetic fracture around a prior total knee replacement who has a failed uh, femoral component 
or possibly for, for a patient who has severe degenerative arthritis of the knee prior to his, his or her fracture. Methods of treatment, blade plate has been used in the past. It's not used very much now because it is technically difficult to place. This was replaced by the dynamic condylar screw. Again, it's very similar to the 95 degree blade plate, but has a screw rather than the blade. So it's easier to place, but it does remove a large amount of bone in the distal femur. This has been surpassed by the locked plate fixation which allows fixation into a short distal thermal uh, piece of bone and it can often be used above a cruciate retaining knee replacement as well. The total knee replacement must be well fixed to proceed with fracture fixation rather than replacement or revision. So the surgical technique could, would use lag screws with locked screws, so a hybrid construct being useful for intercondylar fractures usually used use in conjunction with a locked plate. It's also useful for coronal plane fractures and displaced articular fractures. The pros, percutaneous lateral application can minimize soft tissue stripping and prevent the need for a medial plate. You can, however, develop too stiff of a construct leading to non-union or subsequent plate failure. The non-fixed angle plates are essentially obsolete now because of the tendency toward varus malalignment. Retrograde interlock nail are good for superchondral fractures without significant con comminution and can be used in osteoporotic bone as we discussed. M requires minimal dissection of soft tissue, but the con is that some of these patients will have knee pain from the approach. Symptomatic hardware can occur following lateral plating as the IT band rubs over the plate. You can also get medial screw irritation. We talked about the trapezoidal nature of the distal femur, and it's important to look at the radiograph with the knee and leg internally rotated 30 degrees so that you can get a better look at the length of the screw to make sure you are not protruding significantly through the medial side. Non-unions up to 19% can occur in the metaphyseal area. Treatment is with open reduction and internal fixation and bone grafting. Infection is a risk as is implant failure. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like. We'd love to hear your thoughts and what you'd like to see next in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and follow us on social media.